You know how some videos start off with YouTubers just wanting to do nothing, but <sighs> that's how I feel right now. Because I feel like this particular conversation, one involving the politics surrounding Rambo, Last Blood, is one worth having. Because I actually ended up seeing the movie last night, going in with a mindset of not only being a longtime Rambo fan, being a Sylvester Stallone fan, an action movie fan, but also being fully aware of the current political landscape, at least aimed at this movie, what some people on the left are trying to describe as a pro-Trumpian mega wet dream, one that dehumanizes Mexicans and just brings about their slaughter for no other reason than just to do it, right? It's such a ridiculous concept uh, that I felt I needed to make this video. And I, and I say this, and let me just put my political leanings out there so you know where I'm coming from. I am a pro-Bernie 2020 left-leaning progressive individual. All right. So that's where I'm at in regards to my political beliefs. So I feel I need to talk about this from that perspective. Um, for one, let me point out by just saying that as much fun as I had, and fun's not even really the right word for Rambo Last Blood. It's not necessarily what you would call a fun movie. It's an engaging, entertaining film that kind of has you on the edge of your seat. It's emotional, way more emotional in certain parts than you would expect. But still, it's not what I would call 100% a fun movie. And I will explain that. Uh, but what to understand this movie, you kind of have to go back and look at the beginning of the franchise and, and why ultimately I feel that Last Blood in and of itself is more of a standalone side adventure rather than needing to be a part of the established canon. Um, it's a movie that, in my ultimate opinion, doesn't necessarily need to exist. However, I am glad that it does. And the reason why I say this is because when we go back to 1982, when we first open on First Blood, we see John Rambo walking, a wounded Vietnam veteran suffering from PTSD being hassled by a sheriff played by Brian Dennehy and his cohorts as they try to stop him. We go on this journey that takes us uh, through the eyes of a man who, who's wandering aimless, who doesn't have a place to go. He, he He's kind of a man without a country. He doesn't have a home. And at the end of Rambo from 2008, he finds his home. He goes home to his father's ranch and that's where the movie and seemingly the franchise ended. 11 years later, they pick up the story and th there's a lot that they leave out. A lot of exposition, a lot of things you kind of have to make up in your own mind. But at the end of the day, it boils down to simply being a very straightforward film. John Rambo, still suffering from PTSD, attempting to control his demons from his past, lives on his father's ranch, lives in a series of tunnels. By the way, there's going to be spoilers on this one. I should have made that abundantly clear. But he ends up, uh, you know, uh, training horses. And there are two other women that live on the farm with him. One of them is Gabriella, who is a, basically his kind of like adopted daughter. And we don't get a lot of backstory with her outside of that. When he came back, he was a broken man. He saw her a child of, I think she was around 11 years old at the time or 10, 11 years old. And he saw in her pure innocence, something that he never felt that he got himself, given the time when he grew up, his desire to always be a soldier and him always having to fight one war or another. If you really listen to the dialogue that him and Gabriella have, it does quite well in regards of explaining Rambo's mindset when he was younger and his mindset now that he is an elderly man in his 70s and just what he's been through and where he's been. This is a movie that you do need to see the other films and fully understand the, 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 the idea of John Rambo, I think, to get. And I think a lot of critics who are calling this a Trumpian nightmare or some kind of MAGA wet dream are people who maybe saw the movies in passing, but never actually thought to look at what the origins of the story was, what the fundamental upbringings of the story, who John Rambo is and what exactly he has done or what he has gone through. And these are people who clearly do not understand the impacts on our veterans coming from the Vietnam War. And that is, I think, the biggest misstep at all is not understanding the legacy contained within. And again, this is kind of apolitical. The movie never touches on politics. Politics. People out there said, oh, it's just it's a way to, you know, mercilessly kill Mexicans. The word Mexico is uttered like three times, right? Really, that's about it. I don't even think the word Mexican is even said once in the movie. It's not uttered at all because it keeps it very straightforward. This movie is like a quintessential 1980s action movie to end one of the biggest franchises from the 1980s. That's what it was going for. A very straightforward, simple story. 30 minutes of exposition. The emotional hook sets in. This is what sets Rambo on his journey. And then, of course, everybody dies in the process. And what you have to understand about that is that when you look at 
what exactly happened. And again, spoilers, Gabriella wants to find her father. Her father is in Mexico. She goes to him asking why he left her, something that many kids have wanted to know when their parents leave them for some odd reason. They don't get it when they're younger, and when they're older, they want to understand. She goes down there. Her dad says, listen, I never wanted you. You were just a reminder of your mother. You were mean nothing to me. So he left and went to a, a, a you know, a very bad place in Mexico. She then gets sold into prostitution by a friend of hers who is having trouble living and surviving in Mexico. And that's where Rambo comes into the picture. He ends up getting the crap beat out of him by the dudes. You people call them cartel members. We don't even really get to know much about them as characters. We just know that they are bad and the world that they live in, where they run prostitution and perform human trafficking and probably deal in a little bit of drugs and a little bit of guns makes you think that they're cartel. And I would say nine out of 10, probably they are cartel but it's never a point or a part of the story. It's never really brought up in any meaningful way. And that perhaps is a shortcoming of the storytelling. But like I said, this is a very simple, straightforward tale. This is a revenge story, but we have to get to the revenge. Now, I do think that the trailers misled people as to what exactly the story was because the trailers make it seem like the cartel is coming to John rather than John going to them, which is what the initial setup was. Now they leave him alive, which was ultimately a huge mistake. And they end up doping up and, you know, uh, and pimping out Gabrielle uh, to the point of where four days later, she is just completely tore up. And, and I mean that in like the worst possible way, it's, it, it was very sad to watch those scenes. So he gets healed after being just completely beaten to hell, goes and takes them out, takes her home and she dies. And I'm not going to say, I'm not kidding when I say this, when she died, my jaw hit the floor. I was not expecting that to actually have there be a consequence of this type of behavior. We would assume that coming off of a movie like Taken, which Sherry's very similar themes, that we would have her live and her survive and her be able to go on, right? He would be able to give to her what he never got, a life. And unfortunately, the harshness of the world took that away. So then Rambo does what Rambo does, which is he goes out and he seeks revenge in a very brutal fashion. But I'd like to again point out that at no point do politics play a part in this. At no point does he denigrate Mexicans. At no point does he denigrate integrate the country. These are bad guys who operate in a bad environment that is not unknown to the world. Yes, is it uh, is it stereotypical? Perhaps, but they are not doing it in a way that seems exploitative. They aren't bringing up their, you know, they're not out there saying certain things. It's just, there's, you have to, I lived in Southern California for 15 years. Like I've seen, uh, you know, I've, I've seen a lot come over the border. You, you do when you live there. And again, this was very, just kind of straightforward. Does it, does it kind of make a mockery of our border system of our, you know? Yeah. Cause there's a part where there's like a, a wall. Uh, it's just, it's just, a, it's just a razor wire and he drives right through it. You know, like no one cared. Right. And I guess there are parts where it, that could possibly happen, uh, but they needed to get the story from point A to point B. And uh, and then, of course, you know, the cartel comes to him and then he takes everybody out and then the movie ends. I mean, it's literally that simple. The final 20 minutes of the movie are over like that because it's just insane, violent carnage. But I think it's cathartic in regards to watching it from the audience perspective here. If you are a long term Rambo fan going and watching uh, these movies over the span of all these years, especially watching the very violent festival that was Rambo 2008, where it had the highest body count of over 256 people. This movie had an extremely high body count, too, but that I would say rivaled more Rambo uh, First Blood Part Two, not so much uh, Rambo Three. You can actually look at the body counts where Rambo has one. Right. First Blood has one. Uh, First Blood Part Two is like 79 deaths. And then First Blood or and then Rambo Three's got 179, I believe, or somewhere in that neighborhood. And then Rambo from 2008 has 2000, or 256. This one has, I would say, somewhere in the neighborhood of around 30 to 40, maybe 50 on the high end. A lot of killing. And that last 20 minutes is a very visceral experience. I likened it to watching uh, J Jason Voorhees leading in a group of, of, of bad cartel members uh, into a trap and then just systematically taking them out in just brutal, violent fashion. Like I said, it is not necessarily a fun movie, but it is entertaining and it's engaging. And you, as being there with that journey, being on Rambo's side, want to see him enact revenge against these people for what happened. Could they have done a better job in conveying this? Yeah, absolutely. But at the end of the day, that's all it was. It was a straight revenge tale. They didn't go after the country of Mexico. Nobody called it a shithole. 
If you know anything about Mexico, you know anything about crimes and the cartel that run the show, then you know that this was just piggybacking off of known entities in Mexico. And the people that are out there trying to call it racist and misogynistic, I don't think they fundamentally understand what happens south of the border. I'm just saying that. I don't think they get it at all. I don't think they understand it at all. I think they are coming at it from like, you know, and again, I am a Bernie Sanders supporting liberal. They come at it from a West, you know, from, from a coastal city elite perspective where they don't understand how bad it gets. And the thing is, they would owe it to themselves, I think, to better fundamentally understand this film to go and look up how bad it gets. And I will, I will put it to you guys like this, the, the worst video I've ever seen, and it still haunts me every once in a while to this day, is the one where I saw an execution from cartel. And it was, it was a young girl and it was a machete. And it's something I, when I close my eyes, I can still see it. Right. And it's, it, that was real. That wasn't a movie. And that's a reality people in that country are living with. That's a reality people in that country deal with all the time. All right. And if you think that's not true, you're not paying attention. So this movie coming out and dealing with it from a very straightforward perspective, a revenge tale perspective is just that it's a straightforward story just wrapped in a very real conflict. And for some reason, the, the, the very liberal journalists that are out there, the film critics that are out there fail to understand that, fail to see that, fail to get it. And that's a shortcoming on their part, not yours. If you enjoyed the film, look, I wanted to be honest as, as, as I could with this movie. Are there faults with it? Yes. Do I think it's like a one-time watch? Yeah, I do. I did feel that the action in the end was a little bit kind of lazy only because it was, it was engaging to watch, but it was just kind of a lot of the same, uh, you know, and it happened so fast and I would have liked more exposition and more story. And I feel we got that with the last Rambo film. I think it ended the series perfectly, but this is one at the end of it that I was okay with seeing that I was happy that I saw. And I walked out going, there's no politics in this. There's no politics in this movie at all. If you know anything about the culture, anything about the country, anything about the geopolitics that have gone on at the time, never mind actually following the character of John Rambo through his journey starting in 1982 and ending in 2019, literally 37 years. And I know because I was born in 1982, then you, I think, can maybe better get it. But people out there don't want to get it. They want to write clickbait. They want to, they want to, they want to attack it because they feel that that is how they're going to, I think, probably, uh, uh, you know, make up for the fact that they enjoyed it more than they want to let on. And that's how I view a lot of this stuff. I think a lot of these people who attack things like this are just are just upset that they liked it and they don't want to be seen as being bad or being cast out by uh, the people inside their political group. Anyway, listen, I just wanted to have this honest discussion about the politics of Rambo. Uh, it's not a MAGA wet dream. It is not at all like that. It is a very straightforward revenge tale, very much based around its origins uh, set in the, you know, film as we got out of the 1980s where you just had simple exposition and then carnage. And that's what we got. And that's what fans wanted. And that's what fans spent the 19 million, at least domestically to go and see. And no matter how much you want to try to paint this film as something that it's not, I think anyone who actually takes the time to go and watch it, let alone know anything about the franchise is going to see through your veneer of bullshit. 100%. Just like I, a Bernie Sanders son supporting person does anyway your thoughts your opinions if you like this kind of rant if you want to see more of them please like please subscribe hit that bell and consider becoming a patron because that's what kind of funds me going to the movies these days anyway i will talk to you guys later have yourself a great day thank you so much and peace out